You being you as a woman. How does this hold the key to perfect health? Remember those days when your period wouldn't come on time, or when it did, the pain and flow would keep you on house arrest for days? Or maybe that wasn't much of a thing for you. You only had problem skin, weight issues, and crazy mood swings. Or maybe now is the time when it has hit you. You tire more easily, you're gaining weight, your skin tone is changing. Maybe your hair is falling out or you're experiencing hot flashes, headaches, and, of course, something we women have long been associated with, you're anxious, depressed, and low in self-confidence. And yet, you haven't realized that it has anything to do with you being you as a woman. What does that mean, you being you as a woman? Before we explain to you what we mean by this, you need to consider the following symptoms. Do you experience irregular, heavy, scanty, or painful menses, or PMS? Do you experience other symptoms, such as deep dryness of the body, vascular changes, headaches, or irregular heartbeat, changes in the tone of skin or muscles, weight gain, loss of bone density or thinning hair, anxiety, hot flashes, vaginal dryness or loss of libido? If you are facing any of the symptoms just mentioned, or if you are a woman who recognizes the importance of creating balance today to maintain your health for a lifetime, it is vital that you listen to this real-life experience of a woman who fought medical apathy, questioned limiting medical opinions, and opened the doors of hope and health to thousands of people across the globe. A recipient of the Charaka Award for Excellence in Ayurvedic Teaching, with the honorable title Ayurveda Charya, Respected Teacher of Ayurveda, we're talking about Mary Thompson, a founding member and former secretary of the California Association of Ayurvedic Medicine. Mary Thompson graduated from the very first class of the California College of Ayurveda in 1997. She is now a senior teacher at the college. A clinical Ayurvedic specialist and Panchakarma specialist, Mary answers some questions that will leave you rethinking how you feel about yourself and your body. She will guide you in transitioning from a place of physical and emotional suffering to a place of vitality, radiant health, and joyful confidence. Today, Mary has something deeply moving and impactful, an important experience that every woman can learn from to share with you. When I was 34 years old, I was diagnosed with uterine fibroids. These are usually benign tumors, but because their location and their form, it couldn't be known that they were non-cancerous from ultrasound alone. I was advised to have exploratory surgery so the doctors could get a closer look at them. I was raised mainstream in the United States. My mother was a nurse. I thought doctors knew everything, so I willingly signed up for the surgery. I asked that if the tumors were non-cancerous, that the uterus be left in place. This was against the advice of more than one doctor. I had to sign several documents to this effect. I was told time and again that I was already 34. The fibroids had probably interfered with my ability to have children, and it was unlikely that I would have children at my advanced age. They told me it was unlikely that I would ever have children. They pointed out that if I wasn't going to have children, it was no, made no sense to keep the uterus in place. Still, I asked them to leave it. After the surgery was complete, I woke in the recovery room in the most pain I have ever experienced in my life. They had had to cut through the abdominal wall to get a look at the fibroids. I had stitches both externally and internally. It would take me six weeks or more to be able to drive, to do any work, or to even vacuum. I was relieved to hear that the fibroids were, were benign. There was no cancer at all. But in the next breath, they told me that they had left two fibroids in place. When I asked them why, they said because to take them out would have jeopardized the health of the uterus. And since I had insisted that they leave the uterus if it was non-cancerous, that I was to be blamed for the fact that they had left these in. They again told me that I would simply have to have the surgery again in the future. And at that time, they would go back and they would take the uterus. They predicted it may be a year or two that I'd have the surgery again. I was distraught. Here I was, not even out of the recovery room, and they were already booking my return. When I'd recovered more fully, I asked my primary care doctor more about the fibroids. What had caused them? What could I do 
to remove them? And what could I do to avoid needing surgery in the future? Each of my questions was met with a shrug. Because of my age and the type of fibroids that existed, this was anomalous. There was no reason why I should have had these. He didn't see anything I could do that would prevent my needing surgery in the future. He didn't know when, but he was certain I would need surgery. And as to the idea that I could improve the health of my reproductive tract and possibly have a child later, he met me with compassion. He felt very bad about the fact that I was already too old to consider this a possibility. My entire belief system in the infallibility of doctors was shattered. He didn't know. Medication and surgery were the only tools in his toolkit. I had to find another way. And if I was going to find another way, I had to do it myself. I was committed to avoiding another surgery and getting as healthy as possible. This commitment led me to Western herbalism and natural health care practices. One day in an herb class, the teacher said the word Ayurveda. I raised my hand. I stopped her. I had to know more about this word. She wrote the word on the board. She gave me some book titles and then asked me to wait and ask more about it later. The rest of the class flew past. I don't remember anything I learned that day other than the word Ayurveda and the knowledge that I had to find out more about this. From the class, I went directly to a bookstore and got five books on Ayurveda and began to pour over them. I learned about the elements, the doshas, the causes of imbalance. I looked at my diet and my lifestyle and I realized that I was responsible for this condition. I had created this imbalance in myself. But because I knew I had created it, I also knew that it was in my hands and in my power to correct it. This began my informal study of Ayurveda for my own health. Eventually, by commitment to Ayurvedic self-care, including huge changes in my diet and lifestyle, I recovered the health of my reproductive system. After being told at the age of 34 that conception was unlikely, I gave birth to my son when I was 43. He was born at home with my family and friends around in a drug-free birth. I believe, and I know, that we have the opportunity in every moment to choose greater health and happiness or to turn away from it. I believe that each person has the ability and the responsibility to know the self and to make choices for their physical, mental, and emotional benefit. And what can you do to really take responsibility for yourself? I have seen Ayurveda transform my own life in the recovery of my reproductive system and the birth of my son. This was for me the hallmark of Ayurveda's effect. Beyond my physical health, the deepening of my understanding of the self helped me to develop greater compassion for others. I healed from old and deep emotional wounds by moving to more clarity and acceptance using Ayurvedic psychology. My sense of happiness and satisfaction with my life is directly related to my experiences with Ayurveda. One client in particular stands out when I think of transformations. This woman came in to see me with chronic fatigue. She was only able to work and sleep. When I met her, she was dressed in grays and blacks. Her hair was disheveled. Self-care seemed beyond her. Her quality of life was very low and she was deeply, deeply unhappy. In this instance, I assess this as a kappa imbalance. I made some herbal, dietary, and lifestyle recommendations. Mostly, I wanted her to stretch and to draw prana into her body. I wanted her to move more. I needed her to breathe more deeply. I wanted her to stretch in the morning, in bed if she needed to, to drink more water during the day, and to take a short walk at a park that was in between her workplace and her home. She felt that the walking was beyond her, so I advised her to stop at the park anyway, to sit and to watch other people walking. She was okay with the stretching. She was okay with drinking more water, but walking, that wasn't gonna happen. I was positive in my suggestion to her, but both she and I were skeptical of the benefits of going to a park and sitting to watch other people walking. I didn't share the skepticism with her, though she did share her skepticism with me, and we agreed to meet again in a few weeks. After a few weeks, the transformation was remarkable. She was wearing bright colors. She'd had her hair done. She was wearing makeup. And most important to me, she was smiling. She hadn't taken the herbs because she had an allergic reaction to them when she first started. She did the morning stretching. She drank more water. But the change in her really occurred because of her shift in exercise. As I had advised her, she went and she sat down in that park and she began to watch other people walking. And as she watched them, she said to herself, well, I can do that. And she walked that first day, maybe an eighth of a mile, but she went back the next day 
and walked a little more. And the next day she walked a little bit more. By the time she came back in to see me, she was walking two miles a day. She was also staying up now five hours after the end of her workday. Her morning yoga routine, her morning stretching routine, had become a full 20-minute yoga routine. The reason this was so moving to me is that both she and I could clearly see that this simple shift had so positively impacted every aspect of her life. A change in movement became a change in self-care. A change in self-care spilled over into all aspects of her life. She continued over time to incorporate more Ayurvedic dietary and lifestyle practices. She came back into a state of physical health, balanced energy, and happiness. I am so moved by the profound effect of these simple changes. When you look at the world through the lens of Ayurveda, you see the doshas at play in the individual and in the movement of the day the season, and the life. You see the doshas in how we look, and how we think, and how we act. Through that lens, I understand what is real about a person and what's not. The effect of the doshas is mutable. The person behind the dosha is the real one. I believe that we need to seek that person behind the dosha. And how can we seek the person behind our own dosha? The Ayurvedic Experience is proud to present The Ayurvedic Woman. Experience Symptom-Free Health by Ayurvedacharya Mary Thompson. A high-definition program in three parts. The Ayurvedic Woman is the complete Ayurvedic guide to health issues particular to women that will guide those of you in your younger years to enjoy radiant years of acne-free, PMS-free, energetic, productive life with all five signs of good health. It will show you the way to get rid of the fearful symptoms of painful nights, embarrassing hot flashes, uncomfortable sweating, hard to manage bleeding irregularities, weakness, fatigue, depression, or mood swings. If you're in your later years, it will enable a comfortable, confidence-boosting transition into the next phase of your life. Enter into a stage of grace, ease, sexual freedom, and new, wholesome self-discovery. Most importantly, this program will help you experience true, symptom-free health. Before we tell you more about this course, we want you to know what Mary said when we asked her what motivated her to teach Ayurveda, to create this course, and to share her experience with the world. She said, I want to educate and empower women to take charge of their reproductive health. Every month, we have the opportunity to assess how we're managing the stress of our body and to get a glimpse into the impact of stress. Through education, we learn the language of the body. We can interpret our regularity of menses and the quality of the menstrual flow to understand the impact of the doshas on the body. Without this education, we may think that an imbalance is normal or we may seek treatment that will relieve the symptom but will not eradicate the cause. I believe we have the power in our hands to eliminate the causes of reproductive challenges. And I wanna share that knowledge to give women that power to improve their overall health and to improve their lives. In looking at menopause, I wanna advocate for women to consider self-care prior to menopause. By learning the effect of the hormones, we can apply practices to support balance when those hormones are no longer being produced. I want to educate and advocate for women to use natural treatments to alleviate symptoms they may experience prior to or during menopause so that they can have control over their mental and physical health. Life can be very long after menopause and it's best if those years can be symptom free, not driven by the symptoms of menopause. Your health is in your hands. This course is designed to give practical dietary and lifestyle recommendations to all women so that women can apply these to their lives today to create better health now and in the future. Having seen the effects of Ayurvedic principles on myself in regulation of the menstrual cycle, elimination of symptoms of PMS, elimination of cramping and extreme menstrual discomfort. I've dealt with the recovery of the health of my reproductive system after dire warnings from doctors. And having gone through menopause smoothly, I feel qualified and obligated to share these principles with as many women as possible. This program contains three parts. Part one is titled Introduction to Ayurveda. In this section, Mary will take you from What is Ayurveda? 
through a comprehensive look at the Ayurvedic view of health and disease to a deep understanding of the doshas and datus, giving you the tools you need to have a deep understanding of yourself from the Ayurvedic perspective. Part two is titled, Applying Ayurvedic Principles to Female Reproductive Health During the Childbearing Years. You'll look at the current state of your menstrual cycle to gain understanding of your overall health. We'll identify the signs of reproductive health and how the quality of the datus or tissues of the body reflect our health. The doshas are forces that can impact these tissues, and we will explore how vata, pitta, and kapha affect reproductive health. We will then explore balanced menstruation and symptoms of imbalance by discussing the formation of the endometrial lining, the egg, the fats of the body, the hormones, and the debilitating effects of stress. No discussion on women's reproductive health is complete without a discussion on hormones, and we'll explore the effects of the monthly hormonal shifts on women's bodies and minds, as well as what causes hormonal imbalance and how you can better manage your hormone levels. This section ends with a plan to maintain balance all month long, regardless of the dosha pushing you to imbalance. Strategies for pacifying vata, pitta, and kapha will be offered for any woman to employ now to create greater balance in the immediate future. We also explore tips for natural symptomatic relief for PMS, cramping, and irregularities in menstrual flow. In part three, we encourage you to consider how to create a natural change of life by considering the Ayurvedic understanding of menopause and its often related symptoms. We'll begin with a discussion on the physiological impact of menopause and why we experience symptoms before, during, and after menopause. We'll look at hormones from the other side of the reproductive years. This part includes an in-depth exploration of what causes menopausal symptoms and how to relieve them. It will cover many common menopausal symptoms, including hot flashes, dry skin and vaginal mucosa, vascular changes, loss of skin and muscle tone, weight gain, loss of bone density or thinning of the hair, anxiety, headaches, irregular heartbeat, and even loss of libido. You will receive lifestyle tips and formulas for teas you can make at home to bring you symptomatic relief. We'll end with a comprehensive plan for you to live a full, healthy life after the estrogen is gone. You can watch the program online or download it for viewing when you please, as many times as you please. The program also comes with a free reference guide in a PDF format. You can choose to go through the program, practice the principles, and see the results for yourself. And if for any reason you feel it is not for you, you can simply write to us and get your money back. This program comes with a 100% satisfaction, 60-day money-back guarantee. Ayurveda is affordable, accessible, and adaptable to every person's life. My ultimate goal is to see that people are aware that they have choices in how they treat their body. Ayurveda isn't something you have to go somewhere and have someone do to you. You have the power to change your life. I hope you will find this course helpful and experience true symptom-free health for yourself and share this knowledge with your daughters, your sisters, your friends, and even the men in your life for increased consciousness and understanding.